Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, so let me, uh, as the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, uh, warmly welcome all who have joined online uh, for this very important webinar that uh, was organized for the benefit of the doctors who take care of children, for the benefit of the educationists, as well as for students and for parents. Uh, this is a webinar on the positives and negatives of screen time during a pandemic. Uh, now, actually, uh, why we organized this webinar is that this has become a very important webinar at this crucial juncture where uh, it has become uh, very important for us to maintain the online education as there is a COVID pandemic and the education of all our children has been disturbed uh, for uh, over more than a year. The children are uh, stuck at home and uh, more often the parents are not uh, yeah, educated enough to educate children at home. So uh, uh, they are lost to uh, uh, what to do with regard to their education. And we actually thought that it's on I mean, uh, having this facility, Zoom line, uh, Zoom uh, online uh, teaching facility uh, as an asset at uh, this critical juncture for our students. But then we realized that uh, the paper particles appeared that the problems of getting children addicted to these uh, electronic uh, gadgets. And then it was not long ago that uh, we learned that uh, a couple had lost their child. Uh, because that they resist of handing over uh, the telephone to use, uh, I mean, for his use. So based on all these things, we thought that this is uh, up to date uh, a topic that would be uh, interest that would be uh, of interest to all concern, all stakeholders. So we from the SLMA decided to have this SLMA as a SLMA webinar. I'm uh, very thankful for the. Uh, uh, the uh, psychiatrist, uh, particularly Dr. Swarna Vijayatunga, the consultant psychiatrist, and Dr. Myra Chandradasa for taking this initiative and lining up the excellent panel of speakers to address this most important topic. So you would see that we have an educationist in our panel and also uh, uh, the operation manager, uh, Austral Technology, Perth, Australia, international speaker, as well as uh, our own, the child and adolescent psychiatrist. So to commence the uh, proceedings of the uh, webinar, let me invite our first speaker, uh, Mr. Sepala Kurupuarachi, uh, the provincial director of education uh, at, in Sabragamo province to talk on how to use online education effectively for children. Uh, over to you, uh, um, Mr. Sepala Archibald. Good afternoon, all of you, doctors and other distinguished professionals, for sirs and madams, dear doctors, especially Dr. Padma Gunaratna, the president of Sri Lanka Medical Association, Dr. Muru Adadasa, who invited me, and also other coordinating doctors, Sumita. Isera, Swarna, Vietunga, and all medical professionals, and also all the other professionals. Can you all hear me, Madam Sensors? Yes, yes, very well. Uh, sorry for my inconvenience, firstly. And I'm very, very happy to uh, join with you in this evening. Uh, warmly uh, welcome all of you for this forum also. Uh, who have gathered in this webinar for fruitful discussion. And currently, this topic is very, very important in my point of view also. Uh, again, good afternoon, all of you, sirs and madams. Uh, as, we, as we all know, today our topic is the positive and negative screening time during the pandemic situation. The uh, topic given me is, uh, you can see how to use online education effective in, for our children. 
in here as i think online education means some interest uh, internet based practices which related to school education this is one aspect of distance learning which is little unusual for us since we are usually familiar with face to face learning which means talk and talk methods in our culture experience online education is this a new concept a question there may be two or more answers for this question sir and madams answer one is no this is not new for us online education is a popular concept in all over the world and also even in school education it is a part of embedded part of school education answer two is yes maybe maybe in some of your minds new for us in our school education system for teachers for students for principals and especially parents this may be a very new concept because we all are learn as i said with chalk and talk face to face method as in our culture maybe meaning very effective in this way maybe many other answers also which based on your learning experiences as i concern comparing different and different aspects this is a new concept this is a new practice in sri lankan context have we introduce and are using online education practices to recover covid 19 disaster aspect in education my first answer is yes because of covid 19 pandemic school were closed teachers are teachers and children were isolated at their residences what can we do to provide learning opportunities for them what can we do for learning exactly it is a long period of time none of our none of us expected even in a dream if we considered more and more it is a exactly nightmare madam answers so we all have to find solution it was online education my second answer is no currently new education reforms are formulating in sri lanka with the collaboration of ministry of education the state ministry of education reforms and distance learning and also related other institute like the institute of education and also the department of examination as you all understood distance learning is a major part of new education reforms it means online education is needed to be considered as essential and embedded part of our school education in near future here is there are any issues in using online mode in sri lanka in school education this is a big question to be considered by all of sri lankans considering more of online education we have some essential needs basically we need some electronic assets like smartphones tabs laptops desktop either in sri lanka we have reliable compatible assets only for 40% of out of our student population the other considerable factor is infrastructure i means telecommunication coverage telecommunication strength means signals telecommunication bandwidth telecommunication packed uh, prices all those facts are 
increase in the time of the screening used by parents, used by pupils and teachers. In the same time, technical readiness, awareness of adults, I mean parents, teachers and principals, also a critical problem in Sri Lankan context using the screening for school education. In various aspects which we have discussed as individuals, we all are needed to be aware, knowledgeable and practice for effective use of online education and related practices in school education. So, dear madams and sirs, especially very practical professionals, but I was saying the need and problems related using online education in Sri Lanka, the school education context, you all know, I was talking about the strength, weaknesses and opportunities. Now, I move to talk about patterns in online education. We are ready to discuss the following patterns in online education in Sri Lankan context. In this COVID-19 disaster period, we know in practice many trade names or technical terms become very familiar in the society related with education sector, such as you can see on the screen, Teams, Zooms, LMS, YouTube, website, webinars, just like here, social media groups, WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype, Google, Messenger, some, and also many, many online platform were introduced by various organizations for the school education. From here, I tend to discuss on how to use online more effectively in general education. In first step, shall we think meeting such as Teams and Zooms? Those are now very popular in teaching and learning, but we should know those apps are not good enough to deliver the curriculum in school education, even though we have to use those as temporarily in this pandemic situation, we are not ready to promote and please promote, not please don't promote among school together these meeting apps as education as, uh, apps. In one hand, there are, and in one hand, these apps are suitable for meetings, discussions, seminars like this webinar. On the other hand, these apps are not suitable to deliver the curriculum because of several reasons, like mostly one-way communication, no interactive, no eye contact, the school curriculum is very, very vast with nine or 10 subjects in each grade, since many teachers try to deliver lessons in the same day. Then tuition masters also involved in the same day. Altogether, our kids have to spend 10 or 12 hours out of 12, 24 out of 24 hours a day for the screening time to learn in this pandemic period their subject. Therefore, these apps are not suitable for their organs, not suitable for postures, not suitable, suitable for their growing, developing brains. And also, we have to think this is exactly a wastage in an effective environment in this teaching and learning practices. Considering other online platforms like YouTube's website, these 
lot of education content are used by our kids. Good for learning. But with the inherited qualities are involved with learning, just like common for all, mostly the most content are in English. This reliability, there may be some problems in reliability, means the reliability is little critical. Some contents are not suitable for growing kids in adolescent age. School websites are okay, but only few schools have enough content included. Now, sirs and madams, we all face big problems. How can we promote distance learning? Can we use online education effectively? Do we have alternative solutions for this? Yes, exactly we have many alternative. Think this way, sirs and madams. This media is very, very fantastic. This online media is very, very democratic. On the other hand, this media can be used productively. Our kids, our new generation, they have in born in ICT talents. They born in colorful world. They, therefore, their mindset ha mindsets has been improved with colors, motions, pictures, rhythms and designs. I mean, in Sinhala, Varna, Chalana, Rupa, Ritma, Rata. Kids are born in, in growing and developing in this fantastic environment. So we can develop, promote and use school website, education website, especially education learning management system. As you all know, LMS, which are embedded with the content having some characteristics such as essential, unlimited, alternative, structured, and formulated, I mean, well-organized content. We have our own slogan in Sabagamu province saying, freedom for learning. We promote self-learning. Our teachers and principals and educationists are creating lessons, means content, which can be used by anyone, anytime, any lessons, anyway, in any subject, in any duration of time. That's very, very important thing in using network practices. I mean, online education in effective way. That's why we should be aware of this web media and its effectiveness and efficiency in school education. So, sirs and madams, we, Sabargama province, provide by the provincial department of education has started LMS called enanapsa.lk. This is the Sabargama provincial mission of promoting distance learning. As we responsible adults, we have to think of our kids. As very responsible professionals like you, we have to think of our education. As we very responsible citizens, we have to think of our next generation. This new trends in online education is silver line in dark clouds of COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, all teachers, principals, parents are involved with new trends, assets, and technology. So we should help teachers to develop reliable content, suitable content, and also interesting content, creating and using suitable platform like you know, Itaksalava used by Ministry of Education, Guru Gedara used by Department uh, NI National Institute of Education, DP Education as a private sector, Inana PSA by uh, ourselves, and also many more online practices 
which are very useful for our kids. In any event, teachers is not for us. In my childhood, sorry, uh, as I am concerning, I wish have already gone, as I am concerning, uh, nothing to worry, dear sirs and madams, all professionals, online is only one alternative technology. This is not an alternative for all schools. This is not alternative for teaching or teachers. This is not an alternative for teaching learning process. This is an alternative for this is an alternative for only learning to promote learning. So please keep in touch on your kids, it with your kids. I mean, we have one of our Sabaragamua province as a slogan we use. We should pay our love, attention, and affection on our kids. I mean, Darwan with the Adare Avadane Sa Araksha Valabadi Yuti, Kena Karanea, Api Nitara Kena Karanea, Enisa, Api Pitana, Mena may with Yeta Hitando Nikil, Asata Su and a Mai me, Bambara Sanakeli Malvide, Lasso Leubini Avuna Sita, Obama again when no din, make a Mammetent Ade Shakarani, Asata Su and a Mai me, keeping your eyesight. Ape Darwan, our kids. We should keep in uh, under our love, attention, and affection. Bambara Sanakili Malvili. They are in adolescent age. After grade five, most of our kids become adolescents. So teenagers are very, very keen on uh, some male practices delivered in online mode. Lasso Lavugini Avulunasit. Parents are heartfelt always, mostly. Uh, professionals who are not uh, in home uh, in daytime, or mostly they are not at the home with the kids. So they are facing big problems. We have to think and rethink how to use and how to promote this online asset uh, in very, very useful manner for our kids. So, sirs and madams, to get rid of this type of problems, we all have to get rid of male practices of online mode. We have to help as all stakeholders in education to use effectively the online platform for ever. Thank you very much. This is my presentation, Madam Sciences. Uh, sorry of some, some inconvenient disturbance in, at, the, at the beginning. Uh, I like any question uh, and if possible, many comments. Thank you very, very much for given time and given attention. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sepala Kuruparachi. Uh, I think we would leave questions at the end so that uh, we could open it for discussion. Uh, so let me invite our second speaker, his engineer Taridu Veerasinghe. He is the operation manager, Austral Technology, Perth, Australia. He would uh, he would be talking to us on how to make screens and the internet safe for children. Over to you, uh, engineer Taridu Veerasinghe. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Kunrath. Uh, Hi everyone, uh, a big hello from Western Australia, Perth. Uh, first of all, I would really, uh, I'll be really grateful towards uh, Miru, my colleague, uh, for inviting me uh, for this uh, timely uh, presentation or session, uh, and also Sri Lanka Medical Council. Sorry, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Um, rather than being an IT professional engineer by profession, I would like to share my thoughts and views uh, on this topic. Uh, Oh, the topic that is given to me uh, as a father of nine-year-old daughter who is schooling in year four. Um, yes, uh, I'll share my presentation. Yes. I hope that you can hear me properly. Yes, can. Okay. Uh, hope you can see. Yes. Sir. Yes, I see uh, over 200 participants. Uh, it's really good. Uh, I think most of you are parents. Uh, um, Yes. Uh, 
thanks to online transmission. Yes. Uh, how to make screens and internet safe for children. So I'll be talking about uh, 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 this uh, subject in general, uh, in generic terms, and uh, the things actually I have done myself uh, to safeguard my daughter's uh, screen time and, uh, you know, uh, digital experience. So it will be useful for you guys. And uh, of course, I believe that one of most of you, if not, you know, some of you, uh, have already uh, come across these, uh, you know, already available technologies to safeguard your children. I'm not talking about rocket science. Uh, let's, uh, you know, um, you know, slowly but surely go through the presentation. So uh, this is the outline. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, my own experience first before we talk about all the all the technicalities. And uh, uh, I'll be talking about access control on devices, access control on browsers. Uh, access control via open dns open uh, domain name um, services youtube for kids uh, netflix for kids screen times and a summary and some of the useful uh, links that i have found on in online literature so if i uh, am able to share this particular presentation with you guys um, i think it will be it will be uh, useful for you uh, now prior to tech uh, being a father myself, I suggest that uh, you parents uh, should uh, really be friendly with you, your children, especially uh, the Gen Z, uh, Gen Generation Z uh, children, uh, who are really uh, smart in the digital world. Uh, you should be really friendly with you, um, your kids, uh, um, in order to prevent uh, harmful content access. Content access. So you should know what they're looking at. You should know, uh, you know, what what they what are they are searching for. So you know, being friendly with them, uh, it will make uh, life easier. This is my personal experience. I always know me and my wife always, you know, uh, be in touch with our daughter to see what she's uh, after. You know, uh, <clears throat> likewise. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, if you can explain them about online safety uh, in their own words, uh, in, the, in the words that they can understand uh, to be safe, uh, I think it will be more, info more useful. For example, recently, actually, uh, my daughter was watching YouTube and there was an advertisement going on, um, uh, 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 which is suitable for adults. And uh, I asked her to skip that one immediately. And I, um, you know, uh, as she could understand, I explained uh, the harmful, uh, you know, effects uh, that uh, we can come across, and I advise her to skip uh, whatever whatever the advertisement that is popping out uh, because I have not purchased YouTube uh, Premium, which is advertisement less here. Uh, so, um, actually, I'm really happy to sh share with you all. Uh, once uh, I notice that she, even uh, she, does not notice my presence. She was, uh, you know, skipping that, you know, the, those advertisements when she was watching a, a children related, uh, you know, program in YouTube. So that actually that is more effective. Uh, yes. Um, and also set some uh, goals to earn screen time. You know, I normally do ask my daughter to do homework and do some educational stuff, read some books, and then you earn, uh, earn the screen time. So well, that is, I think that is, that is working well for me, uh, for us. Uh, so it's a kind of a tip. Uh, so those are my experience. Let's uh, move to the techie part of this. Uh, so <clears throat> the most important thing uh, that uh, we have to do is that we have to uh, control access uh, when they are um, accessing um, the digital devices. For example, <clears throat> I have done, uh, I have created the uh, uh, a separate uh, Windows account for my daughter. Uh, it is not rocket science. You can uh, create a separate email account for your children uh, under 13. Um, you know, all the contents are, you know, <clears throat> automatically filtered. So you don't need to worry about it. All the platforms, Google, Microsoft, almost all the tech giants have now provided this thing. So you might have already known these things. So. Uh, so the, my first advice is to uh, <clears throat> uh, create uh, separate accounts for your kids 
And when they use the computer or when they use the device, use that particular account uh, for browsing, for their educational work, so that you don't need to worry about their online safety because the platform itself, uh, it provides the security. So this is my, again, my experience. Uh, so create a Microsoft, I'll, I'll guide you through uh, the snapshots that I have taken. Um, uh, <clears throat> in your Windows 10 piece, PC, one of the PCs that I'm using, uh, you have this uh, family option. Uh, it is the most recent one. So uh, uh, you can create an account for your uh, children. Uh, so this is, uh, so this is uh, the steps that I have uh, used to create an account for my daughter. Uh, so you can create uh, a password, uh, you can, um, you know, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> you can be the uh, parent who uh, control uh, the account of your uh, child or children. Make sure that uh, you correctly uh, give the birthday. So the system uh, automatically uh, block the inappropriate uh, content uh, by uh, checking uh, the birthday of your child. <clears throat> and Microsoft uh, smartly provides uh, uh, the screen times. Uh, you can set the, not only Microsoft, uh, even Apple itself, uh, all those platforms, uh, even Android, we can um, you know, you know, set, uh, set up the screen time. So, uh, uh, I'll share another personal experience later when we talk about Apple devices. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so once you have created a separate uh, Windows account for your children, this is how it looked like. You know, you can log in, uh, uh, look in, uh, log in uh, uh, as themselves, and see, see, see. Uh, you know, whether you can access any kind of uh, you know adult content. So. So it, it automatically blocks all the stuff. So they are safe in their account. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> my wife is using uh, an Apple device. Uh, so we have created this, this similar children, uh, you know, child safe app or, you know, kids account in Apple as well. So uh, uh, we are using that particular as uh, um, that particular uh, account uh, for her kind of entertainment stuff. Uh, recently, actually, um, you know, the screen time that I have set, uh, it was exceeded. Then uh, she had to come to me and uh, ask uh, to increase the screen time. So, so since it was a kind of humble, valid request, I thought, yes, I'll allow her to watch uh, uh, another 15 to 13 minutes. So that, that can be uh, configured easily with these operating systems. Uh, so I really suggest you to... Uh, uh, follow those, uh, you know, very uh, self-explanatory steps. Uh, so I have given this, uh, uh, all the URLs, URLs in the sense, uh, web addresses, uh, uh, really self-explanatory. You can, you know, read and understand how to do those things. So I'm not going to guide you through all, each and every step because it's time consuming. Uh, the time is, uh, you know, important and uh, I have given 15 minutes. Uh, so I talked about Microsoft Windows 10 and uh, Apple iOS, uh, and this is uh, the Android section of access controlling. Uh, I think uh, in my phone, this is actually, I have taken the snapshot from my phone uh, using uh, the latest Android, uh, Android 11 version. Uh, when I searched online, actually, uh, Android, actually, they have uh, made arrangements to uh, uh, <clears throat> have these parental controls for all of their versions, I think, in legacy versions as well. So if you're using Android, just check uh, you can have this uh, digital well-being and parental controls. So um, uh, via that, you can, you know, limit the screen time and also block the uh, unwanted access, uh, you know, adult content. Uh, and uh, through the Google Play App Store, uh, you can configure uh, <clears throat> configure the harmful or in in other words, like you know, um, um, uh, adult related applications or games or whatever, uh, it will be automatically you know blocked. Uh, yes. So 
I have taken this snapshot from uh, this particular website. Uh, you can, it is actually Australian related, but you know, definitely you can read through uh, and understand how to prevent web content in your Apple device. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, have you enabled uh, safe search in your browser <clears throat> or Google? So I took the first example as Google because it's the most leading search engine available. So there is a way to, uh, you know, <clears throat> safeguard your browsing experience or in, in other words, your children's browsing experience by, uh, you know, if you type google.com in your web browser, and go to your top, uh, sorry, bottom right corner, then uh, there is uh, the safe search filters, um, sorry, search settings. And then from search settings, you can go to safe uh, search filters. You can filter the number of, uh, you know, search results per page. So automatically the uh, explicit, explicit content will be blocked like pornography and all. Uh, so that is one option. That is also one option. Uh, to safeguard your browsing experience if you do not have a particular kid's account. So if you do have a kid's account, definitely this browsing experience will be limited. <clears throat> uh, and the other thing about, uh, you know, search engine, um, you know, sorry, browsing experience, I have created separate accounts for my daughter. Uh, so I have separate accounts for my you know, office work and, you know, um, uh, my personal so so you you also can do that chrome being the most kind of widely used uh, um, browser around so i thought uh, bringing out that example uh, but definitely in mozilla firefox and all other uh, you know uh, safari all those browsers you know prominent browsers around they they, they provide these uh, you know these options so once you have created a separate Chrome profile for your kid and uh, let them access the, 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 the internet content using their particular account, that means they are using their own email address, which is a child safe one. Uh, so they don't have any access to, to harmful content. So it's easy. <clears throat> Uh, I have put on this uh, slide as well uh, in your Play Store. So in any case that you have, you know, you are lending your phone to your kid, uh, just to make sure that the Play Store is safe. Uh, so, and also uh, the safe, uh, you know, uh, search is also safe, uh, enable safe search. <clears throat> uh, this is the kind of, uh, Another techie smart way of uh, blocking uh, blocking unwanted content or unwanted sites uh, uh, using DNS services uh, that might need a little bit of technical knowledge, uh, but it's not rocket science again. So, <clears throat> Open DNS uh, I have taken from Wikipedia, so you also can you know search and have a look. Open DNS, DNS uh, is a company that uh, you know uh, uses uh, generic IP addresses, IP addresses in the sense uh, internet protocol access that uh, you know your machine will be given a kind of a kind of a unique uh, you know uh, unique identification while you are browsing. Um, so that is called internet protocol address. So um, uh, two of these services, Open DNS and Clean Browsing, will provide you some certain IP addresses where you can uh, configure your uh, Wi-Fi router at in your homes, uh, or in other words, your phone or device as well. So you can uh, uh, configure the browse, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi settings uh, so that. Uh, the persons who are using that particular Wi-Fi uh, facility, they don't have any access to uh, adult content. Even you guys don't have any access then if you have configured that. So, <clears throat> so if you, you know, if you can't, uh, you know, create uh, the things that I have mentioned earlier, so if you configure this thing in your Wi-Fi hotspot, or sorry, Wi-Fi router, uh, I, I believe you have uh, Sri Lanka Telecom or Wi-Fi Dialog or whatever. Those are the two 
main provider service providers and internet service providers in Sri Lanka. So in any other routers, <clears throat> uh, if you go, if you type uh, 192.168.0.0 or 0 0.1, uh, you can access the particular Wi-Fi router uh, and uh, there will be a portal to enter username, password, uh, more often than not, if you have not changed it early uh, previously, it is admin admin. So um, you can act, you know go to the uh, the router itself and configure this DNS domain name, uh, services, uh, IP addresses, uh, um, and then it will definitely be a safe surfing experience for entire home. Um, so if you like that, definitely go and read these two articles. I really advise you to read that. It is really self-explanatory, really good one. And step-by-step -step approach is there. Uh, you can configure your you know, home Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, I think I, I, it's a smart solution because nowadays, uh, you know, in Sri Lanka, I think uh, not in even in Sri Lanka, but all over the world, we are, you know, stuck at home and uh, you know you know learning uh learning through online facilities so it's it will be really handy uh remember then uh, you also can't uh, access uh, adult content so uh, so these are the uh, generic uh, uh, the special ip addresses that i have uh, mentioned uh, uh, again uh, you know captured from the 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 previous article that I have mentioned, the credit should go to that particular article. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's already available and I can assure that it, it, it protects your privacy. You can, uh, you, you can, you can, uh, you can have a look at, uh, look at the privacy controls or privacy policies. Uh, it is okay to use. So your information uh, will be encrypted, encrypted in the sense uh, let's say protected for those who don't know about encrypted encrypted is uh, uh, the term that we're using to you know um, you know safeguard our information okay uh, youtube kids uh, i think uh, most of some of you or most of you uh, know about youtube kids uh, it is available here uh, unfortunately, I couldn't check whether it is available in Sri Lanka. I assume it is. Uh, so, when you uh, configure your Gmail or you know Google, uh, you know profile for your children, automatically when they go to YouTube, it will show YouTube Kids. So, if you do create as, uh, an email for your so Gmail for your kids, definitely you don't have uh, you don't have to worry about YouTube will be redirected to YouTube Kids. So if you have not created an email, so I suggest uh, that you install YouTube Kids. And if you if they ask your phone, then you just give uh, YouTube Kids uh, if they want YouTube videos. <clears throat> Here in Australia, I think uh, Netflix is really uh, popular. So I thought of bringing that in, even in Sri Lanka, I know that it is popular. So all the almost all these online movie platforms, they have this kids section. So so if you watch movies through Netflix uh, or you know whatever you know whatever the platforms that you are used to, try uh, to create a separate account uh, for your kids. So when they watch movies, it's uh, you know it's a safe safe for them. Okay, screen times. Yes, I have shared my own experience. Uh, it is really important, uh, not only for eyes, but also, you know, for brains. I think, you know, most of you are doctors here. So it's, uh, you, you know better than me about those, uh, you know, those aspects. So uh, screen times uh, and also the distance between uh, the device or the screen uh, to your eyes. I think um, it's at least 20, 20 inches, right? So, so, so uh so so make sure that you have those in mind summary uh yes it is essential in my world it is essential that you create a separate account for your kids 
doesn't matter it's windows 10 or whatever windows uh, android apple you know ios all those platforms uh, you know readily you know provide the facility for kids children set screen times uh provide the, or facilitate 20 inches from the screen uh when kids are using digital screens make sure that they always log into their account um uh if they use your device as daily basis disable the potential harmful apps so if you kind of uh, as i mentioned earlier if you you know disable if you enable this uh, safe kind of search in your phone browsers or whatever the uh, you know app store um definitely it'll be okay uh for kids about 14 of age i personally suggest that you be in contact the the, the, the first thing that i have told you know be friendly with them uh you know uh and about you know adult content and uh, you know explain them uh, so i think i think it will solve a lot of problems uh, so so it's a matter of when that they have uh, access to these content you know so it's 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 our duty to you know control them uh with kids belonging to gen z generation z born between 1997 to 2012 you know so my one is 20, 2012 so they are really smart so and uh, they can disguise you easily so don't let them disguise you uh, so just uh, one of the one of the most important thing that covid has done uh, for me that uh, it it has actually increased the computer literacy among parents especially in sri lanka that's really good so uh, uh yes there are practical difficulties when we come to online learning uh, as mr sepala mentioned but i think uh, let's take uh, let's see the dark clouds in sorry silver line in the dark clouds so <clears throat> that's more or less my presentation uh, over to you, dr gunaratna thank you very much uh, tarendu thank you uh, for that excellent presentation on experience of it father on bringing up uh, um, adult a child of 9 years in this uh, australian setting with the uh, all the it facilities and uh, now because we are pressed for time let's uh, move on to the other, other presenter is dr muru chandra das he is consultant and uh, consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist from colombo north teaching hospital he would be talking to us how to manage psychological aspects of screen use in children muru over to you uh president slm me our dear teacher madam padma gunratna uh, my friend tarindu and mr kurupparachi thank you very much for giving your opinion and ideas so i will be talking about the psychological aspects of screen use on children so first of all i would like to talk about what could be the consequences of excessive screen time on children so when children of today are exposed to screen they can be exposed to violence especially in video games they can be exposed to risk taking behaviors because most of these video games will have very risk taking behaviors and they will observe them and they will be exposed to inappropriate content over social media and youtube and sometimes when they use uh, messaging services they will be contacted by predators who are looking for children uh, and they can become victims and sometimes when you watch tv or even social media there will be lot of negative stereotypes people shouting and yelling at other people people who are not role models that can be seen for the kids and children while watching movies may be exposed to people using substance use and sometimes these movies will give a heroic heroism to these characters who use substances and obviously people with certain personality traits especially people with antisocial personality traits they will become cyber bullies and will try to communicate with children to abuse and bully them so increased screen time have been proven to be associated with 
certain negative psychological consequences and these have been proven worldwide in western and asian countries so increased screen time after 8 pm is associated with sleep delay and sleep problems lower grades in school and they tend to read lesser books because the screens are so attractive they don't like to read the books they don't like to read novels they like to watch something and they are mostly on the screens and they will miss time with grandparents and parents and they will be very sedentary and some of them will develop childhood obesity and because the screens are so fast you can get whatever you want with an instant even in real life if they want something if they are not given that chance they will become upset and angry and they will have mood dysregulation and the screens will show them very thin people who are sort of uh, very difficult targets in considered to body majors and they themselves will feel very negatively about themselves seeing these images and sometimes when they are on social media they will have the fear of missing out because they think i have to be online all the time if i want to get information about the world and my peers and obviously because the screens are so fast and interesting they will not learn how to relax themselves without a screen so whenever they are bored and lazy they will ask to watch something to calm themselves and they will not have their own relaxation skills like meditation walking drinking little bit of water or singing a song or playing but they will always use screens as a coping technique so why does some kids are more used to screen time and why is it difficult to uh, get them away from screen so why is it common in certain kids so one reason children are face with screen addiction is that because of the parenting style so i will give you some examples to understand the permissive type parenting style so these parents will come and say lamai thing ehema tamai ai ehema karanne pa if a child does a wrong thing there are no consequences they will say lamai thing ohoma tamai just let it go there are no consequences so reinforcements they will give unlimited options they will say parippu vela tiyenne wata kanda daida ma mari mama sosage hadala denna so there are no behavioral boundaries whatever the child needs the parents will provide then they will say mamai babai hondama yalu eya mata on ekak kiyana kids have plenty of opportunities to make friends at school in the neighborhood parents should not be kids friends they can be friendly with the child but not friends so the these parents who have the permissive parenting style will be mostly friendly and friends of the kids rather than being parents and when they come to see us in the clinic the most characteristic thing they say is mama kalin aawa doctor ta vistara kiyanna eya isara kiwoth eyata duka hite ne they are afraid to comment about their own kid in front of their kid they are afraid of their own kid so they will come beforehand and tell doctor eyata kiyanne pa mam mehema kiwwa kiyala so they are afraid of their own child so how the can they be parents so research have proven that these parents rarely discipline their kids they don't expect much self control they allow the child to control their own world and they take a status of a friend and this type of parenting style is associated with high internet and screen addiction second reason why kids are more addicted to screen compared to other kids is that they have untreated inattention and impulsive behavior so the recent example in sri lanka even though i have not seen that kid personally the most likely reason is that untreated attention deficit hyperactivity 
Where when a child is forgetful, can't focus, not to organize, not willing to uh, sit down and learn something, there's more likelihood of developing screen addiction. So it's rather than screens creating inattention, it's actually the other way around. If your child is inattentive, the real world is so boring because the real world requires effort, taking time. The screen is a very good place for a kid with inattention because it's so fast and you can maintain your focus even if you are inattentive in the real world. So if there is untreated ADHD, the child can develop screen addiction easily. Girls who have ADHD, who may not have hyperactivity, are easily missed by teachers and parents. They will say, uh, she's not disturbing anyone, but she doesn't do her work as well. Another factor for screen addiction is when children now have high impulsivity. Impulsivity means they do things without thinking about the consequences, and they have heightened negative effectivity. That means they get upset and angry for even minute things. If your child has these things, they are more likely to develop screen addiction and inappropriate use. So what should we do to prevent inappropriate use of screen so we can protect our children? The first thing, obviously, as Taridu mentions, we have to monitor the screen time any smartphone or tablet now have its own app to monitor the screen time for each app that the kid is using. Secondly, according to the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, that is the World Authority on Ch Children's Mental Health, it says that children below 18 months should only use screens to call another parent or a grandparent with another caregiver. Like, for example, if Tarindu's daughter wants to speak to the grandparents, Tarindu can sit with the daughter and talk if, if the daughter is 18 months old. Between 18 to 24 months, it should be only for educational programs with a parent. Between two to five years, educational activities like online learning through the preschool, it's all right, but non-educational activities like cartoons and movies should be limited to one hour per day. And above six years, there's no limit for the number of hours, but it should be encouraged on learning activities and the parents should monitor. And usually the parents should be present with the child when possible. The general recommendations from the AACAP is that during common family time like meals and outings, please don't allow screens, turn off them. Please use parental controls as Tarindu mentioned. Avoid screens as a way of calming the child. Like for example, if the child is disturbing you, don't give the screen, then it becomes a positive reinforcement. The child's mind learns that whenever I'm upset, I deserve the screens, so he will become upset frequently. And make sure you remove screens from kids at least 60 minutes before they go to bed. So that is very important to protect their sleep EEG rhythm because uh, it can affect the REM and non-REM sleep. So simple recommendations allow them to make a connection between what they see on the screen and the real world. If they are watching a cartoon, you also watch some episodes, get to know the characters. When you are going around or when you are visiting someone, mention these cartoon characters when they are appropriate. And educate them about negative stereotypes and unethical advertising. For example, this is a famous Sri Lankan advertisement about the fairness screen. You can see the most fairest is standing in the front and seem to be the leader, which, which gives the children 
which is colorism they are uh, the lighter skin is better than the darker skin these kind of stereotypes the teenage girls and boys should be educated about and become role models and do some physical activity every day so they can see you outside maybe passing a ball little cricket match so they can see you on the outdoor activities and make sure when you are at home on weekends or when you have free time that you read books and please when you come back from work please keep your smartphone in a box near the door and don't use your smartphones in front of the child that will lead to what we call observational learning or vicarious learning where children see their parents using the screens all the time so be role models read some books and they will learn from you and schools teachers require a lot of whatsapp groups because there are a lot of groups made by parents but in front of the child make sure when a stranger contacts them help them to block that person and leave unnecessary groups so become role models so they will do the same even when you are not supervising them and make sure whatever the app they are using go to the esrb org website type the name of the app the your child or teenage son or daughter is using and get the rating it will give information about the violence and inappropriate content for every game and every movie they can watch so uh, i will provide the links you can go to and find details about this esrb website so in summary see whether your child has inattention forgetfulness can't follow instructions not to organize treat and take to a mental health professional and get treatment for adhd if your child is very impulsive act without thinking get upset for minute things negative affectivity teach them relaxation skills and coping skills walking meditation songs playing activities if you are a permissive parent and you have no behavioral control of your child please learn about proper parenting styles and change yourself in related to healthy screen use check the esrb rating of any app your child is using and always try to make the connection between the virtual world and the real world so these are some of the references you can go to the american academy of child and adolescent psychiatry website you can go to the esrb org entertainment software rating board and some of the references that you can read to understand these concepts so i would like to thank madam padma gunaratna and slma for inviting us and uh, thank you very much amiru thank you for that very uh, short but then um, informative lecture so i think that is the time for discussion there are a few questions as well uh, i think that uh, is i mean it's important that we try to answer some of these questions actually uh, as there 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 is uh, one question i thought that uh, for i mean there are teachers there are mothers the uh, one is that they are interested in finding out uh, uh, what about that parents using telephones for feeding the children uh, whether it's a good habit or whether it is uh, not recommended uh, maybe that uh, i do not know uh, tarindu yes uh, sorry miuru thank you okay. madam i think uh, while the meal time especially yes. for young kids is very important time to develop social communication yes. eye to eye contact facial expressions and hand gestures are very important for the development of the young child's mind so if you are using a screen which can never replace the face of a parent you are uh, depriving your child of lot of opportunity for psychological development and that should be entirely discouraged 
Right. Thank you very much. Because that you see that, uh, I mean, you uh, uh, categorically said that you should not use the uh, electronic app to silent uh, the child when he is a, a troublemaker. But at the same time, even for feeding, you do not want that to be used. Uh, Right. Uh, is there any way to control WhatsApp group? There's nothing. I mean, we only prepare that, isn't it? Uh, the uh, in practical, we parents have to use much screen time these days because of the work from home concept. Then uh, how we can be a role model in a tricky way? Right. That is a very big. Yeah, I think that's an important question. I mean, I was also thinking that more often parents need to be. Uh, um, Control, isn't it? So the, I mean, these days that parents find very difficult because the parents are working from home. Uh, so how do we become role models for children? Uh, Tarindu, maybe that you could answer from the, the your experience from Australia. Uh, yes. Um, uh, what I would suggest is that yes, we should be role models in at least in front of our kids. <laughs> and we have well uh, in order to do that as muru suggested uh, uh, as as much as possible just limit your digital experience in front of your kids uh, keep away your digital devices and uh, regarding the whatsapp question ma'am i think uh, at this moment uh, i have not um, you know you know controlled my whatsapp because my daughter is not using or she doesn't know about whatsapp so so uh, End-to-end -end encryption is there, but uh, it does not mean that um, uh, it does not mean that uh, content is, you know, limited. I mean, restricted. So, uh, regarding WhatsApp, yes, if your children is using that, definitely uh, uh, keep an eye on uh, uh, what they are doing. But I'll try to search online and if uh, share whatever the link, if there is possibility. Um, uh, took uh, you know restrict WhatsApp. So stay tuned. I'll I'll I'll, I'll just before before the session ends. I'll I'll, I'll share that one. Yeah. The, uh, the with regard to the ADHD child, the screen time should it be zero? Namiro. Uh, thank you, madam. So definitely no, because the new generation will learn a lot of skills through online uh, activities. And some studies have shown if you match the correct app to the child's cognitive profile, there can be a lot of improvements. For example, if there's a child who cannot concentrate, uh, if you are an expert, you can provide the correct cognitive profile and the app that poor concentration can be improved with certain tasks for simple things, simple games that you can play chess can sometimes improve concentration in some kids. But compared to other kids, kids with attention deficit should have less screen time because they are the ones who can easily get drawn into them and get addicted. Because of that, it is more better, better to encourage outdoor activities for them, but it doesn't mean the screen time is zero. It should be as a positive reinforcement. If you listen to online learning, if you eat your meals, if you do your homework, you get this amount of screen time. That is the way to keep control. Uh, thank you, Miru. Uh, another question is uh, with regard to books. Now we have online books as well as the hard copies. So when you are reading books, I mean, children get addicted to books as well. So do we uh, have to um, be a sort of a strict? Uh, with regard to online books, or is it for both? Uh, I mean, do we promote both, or how do, how does it? Uh, uh, how do we apply that uh, for bringing up children? Uh, interesting question, madam. Now, reading a book and watching a movie are two different things in the sense of creating imagination. For children between two to seven years, what we call the pre-operational stage of cognitive stage. Imagining things is very important. They probably have never seen the real Harry Potter, but they would have imagined Harry Potter in a certain way that we have never seen. So that is the creativity that we should uh, imply on our kids. So when you watch a video book or an audio book, some of that imagination is taken out. 
but obviously teenagers you can't prevent them from all these things that's okay but they have passed that cognitive stage but for younger kids always better to stick to printed books right right uh, i do not know whether uh, mr sepal kurupwarachi has uh, any different opinion because uh, you are an educationist with regard to online books and hard copies is there a recommendation no madam i completely agree with the doctor's uh, answer because even in the uh, european and very developed countries the, the, even though they have lot of uh, 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 network assets uh, using by students in school level uh, they promote uh, libraries and printed materials for uh, reading because it is very very useful for uh development of their cognitive uh, uh part of the brain so uh, the answer is very very correct and useful dr uh, biru uh thank you then uh, they are interested in knowing that how to convey children games addiction not good mm. uh i will answer it i i more than welcome for others to answer as well Yes, so yes. simple way to find the video game addiction is if the time they spent on the video game is increasing every week started with half an hour two hours six hours like that second thing is when they are not allowed to play it do they become angry and upset they are angry they are annoyed they are bothering you is that there the third thing is do they wait until you go to sleep and play the game lying about it lying about the content and the use and the time the fourth thing is do they appear extremely bored and lazy when they are not doing it they are it's like a negative reinforcement like they are so bored and they say they don't like to read the book if these symptoms are there video gaming addiction can be there so as the american psychiatric association says internet gaming disorder is a known entity so you have to be aware of these things and if you go to the esrb website certain games with violence are definitely a no for any child um yeah good one uh, well, shall i add a bit yes uh, yes yes tarindu yes it most will come uh, yes yes uh, uh, one thing about uh, i i was i was just following the chat uh, going on uh, one thing about the books actually here in australia Mm-hmm. uh our kids uh, definitely need to uh, uh, i think muro also you know about it uh definitely they at least read, need to read one book per week the um, uh, still uh, the physical reading is uh, heavily uh, you know focused uh, uh, even i myself being a kind of day to day you know computer related man uh, i still prefer hard hard car, hard car books i'm mean, sorry the physical books uh, you know to smell it feel it you know it's like um, uh, yes ebooks are really important uh, but both the things you know you have to you know have the balance uh, i'll share another ex- experience uh, with me uh, um, uh, there are some english words that my daughter always gets to you know uh, need to you know get the meanings uh, i have bought her, her uh, a small kind of pocket dictionary uh but uh she she prefers to you know grab uh, her ipad because they are using ipads from year 4 here um well restricted uh, even in school it's uh, well restricted to wifi so she's now used to you know surf and get the get the meanings uh, very quickly through surfing but uh, as parents um, you know uh, we should see the balance of it you know um, you know books yes they are reading uh, not exactly you know 100% on ebooks they are reading and even i myself prefer you know honestly prefer the hard books you know physical books rather than reading this ebooks uh, i think it, it it gives us more feeling you know feeling yeah uh, yes that's that's one of the ex- you know experience that i would like to share yeah uh, thank you tarun this question actually is to me if a child is select actively inattentive for certain tasks like taking down notes but pay good attention in math can it be considered as a form of inattention selective inattention can be due to several reasons one thing is auditory processing abnormalities 
Sometimes you may have seen some kids, uh, when they are asked to write something, they may write, but when you say something to them, they hear it, but they ignore it. So auditory processing abnormalities. Sometimes some kids may not cry because of, for example, uh, fine motor deficiencies and dyspraxias for reason the touch of the pencil or the hold of the pencil is a difficulty for them. Sometimes some children do not write because it consumes time, especially uh, phonological languages like Sinhalese, where the, the, lang uh, the letters are, has a lot of curvature. They don't like to spend and write letters because they have a, a little bit of ADHD and inattention. So you cannot say without observing and clinically assessing the child, but if the child do not write, what you have to do basically is make a reward scheme. That is, if you write this much amount, like a paragraph, you will be given a star. If you reach five stars, you will be given one hour screen time or one hour playing time outdoors. So make a reward scheme at home. Uh, what is uh, uh, opinion of yours with regard to when parents try to sort of uh, uh, discipline children, the grandmothers getting involved and rescuing them? Uh, important question, madam, in our culture. So one of the commonly seen things is that most grandmothers think that they have done it all and they can repeat things what they have done with their kids, with their grandkids. Unfortunately, the times have changed a lot and the social milieu and the cognitive profile of kids 30 years ago to kids today is entirely different. They can easily learn things within a few minutes, but if they ask to be sick, to be given something, they get upset. So they have become more impulsive and the attention spans have become lesser. So uh, grandmothers are very important part of our society. Thank you very much for keeping our workforce active. But I think all the adults in the house need to be in the same page, I think led by both the mother and father and the grandparents can be supportive. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we uh, had a, a very interesting and informative uh, webinar on the positives and negatives of screen time during a pandemic. Uh, the, uh, we now know that uh, there are many positives and there are ways to control negatives. So we happily should be able to go through this pandemic in a way that the outcome is fruitful for all parents as well as for children. Finally, I mean, we know that entirely the future of a country is determined by the education of our next generation children. So let us have hopes of uh, uh, having a sort of a better outcome with the, uh, the uh, uh, screen control, I mean, discipline screening for our children and to have a better generation uh, in years to come. So let me uh, thank all three speakers for their excellent presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Sepal uh, Kurupuarachi. Thank you. Uh, Engineer Tarindu Veera Singh for joining from Perth and to our own uh, excellent speaker, Dr. Miru Chandradasa for spending their expertise, I mean, for sharing their expertise within, with our, the audience, as well as for spending their valuable time to communicate this important message to our audience. I thank you very much for all, other, all others who joined online to make this webinar a great success. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Thank you and stay safe.